Okay. Table A5, as I mentioned, that is nice round values of pressure here. Okay, so we've got nice round values of pressure. These are the same tables. Table A4, table A5. This is saturated water with nice round temperatures. This is saturated water with nice round pressures. Um, if you don't believe me, let's look at, at about 101.3 kilopascals. It's about one atmosphere. I've got a saturated temperature, a boiling temperature of 99.97, roughly 100 C. If I go back to the previous table, um, at approximately 100 degrees C, the saturated pressure is about 101.42, roughly one atmosphere of pressure. And there'll be some other data points you could probably find in there. Um, his, this, this one's going to be pretty close, so notice that about 20 kilopascals of saturated temperature is 60 degrees C, and I would most likely find the same corresponding data over here. If I went and looked at 20 kilopascals, I would notice that the water boils at roughly 60 degrees C. And you would probably notice that these properties the rest of the way across would very closely match this row here at 60 and roughly 20 kilopascals. So it should match very closely. So again, table A4, and ta which goes on for a couple pages, this page and this page. Right. Table A5, this page and this page, contain roughly the same data, uh, just different scale. So at this pressure, this is the boiling temperature, the saturated temperature. At this boiling temperature, the saturated temperature, this is the pressure for you to have boiling, for phase change to occur, those two values have to lock. Now, what are these other values that go across here? Well, you've got specific volume, lowercase v. Right? <coughs> Remember our trusty sheet we had last, not too long ago, right? Specific volume, that's volume per unit mass, lowercase v. Specific internal energy, that is big U divided by M. So total internal energy is big U, lowercase u is specific internal energy. That's this quantity here. These are lowercase u's. You have values for saturated liquid and vapor, and values for saturated liquid vapor for, a lower, for the u value. There's an evaporation value. We'll talk about these in just a little bit. Okay? You also have a quantity we call enthalpy, which we'll talk about and finally entropy. All right. Now, I know there's loud pops there. I'm, I'm not going to actually see what I'm seeing on the viewfinder. Okay. So um, <coughs> the viewfinder keeps shutting off on me, so I'm not going to keep the camera awake. So from there, then, the next table, table A6, with these superheated water. So at different pressures, you're going to have rows of temperatures. And these ro this row of temperature, for example, it goes for this block this block and this block. So it's one common row of temperature and then volume, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, all the way across for different pressures. And so the water, this goes on for a couple of pages, superheated water. And the A6 goes on for about three or four pages. And then there's a small table of compressed liquid water. We'll talk about why we don't really worry too much about that a little bit later. Okay? Right, what else we got there? And there is an ice vapor table, which I don't think we've ever used. By the way, if you just say, Steve, man, that just looks dumb. I don't like those tables at all. You're welcome to use these. Um, this is a graphical representation of the table. I, feel free to use these. I never actually learned how to use these. I, I looked at them and thought, okay, I could figure that out if I needed to. I much prefer the tables, because if you ever really try to use one of these, you'll probably prefer the tables as well. But you don't like the tables, that's fine. It, these, this is an alternative. You're welcome to use these. These are what we call the, the Moiler diagrams. Um, they contain the, the information in the tables that you've just seen, just in a graphical form. And then the next page, then, after that, this is saturated R134A tables. This is refrigerant 134A. What is refrigerant 134A? Uh, some kind of coral fluorocarbon. Uh, it's one of the, let's see, I think table A1 actually gives the, the chemistry name for it. Tetrafluoroethane. So that is an ethane, that's two carbons with um, four fluorides attached to it, if memory serves.
say it's been a long time since I've had organic chemistry. His memory serves that's what tetrachloroethane tells me. What does that tell you? I, I don't know if that tells you anything. It's an oily substance that will go through a phase change uh, at a favorable temperature pressure combination for us to run in refrigerators and other air conditioning devices. Um, that's really kind of all we would need to know at this point to be able to do what we need to do. Just understand the tables for R134 work the exact same way the tables for water do. Um, and if we had tables for like ammonia or propane, they would work the same way as well. Okay, so I'm just kind of giving you the tour here and then we're going to talk about actually using these as we go along. But again, saturated tables for R134. First table has nice round values of temperature. Uh, that's table 11 in our text. Table A12 has the exact same information, just nice round values of pressure and variable corresponding values of temperature. And then these are superheated tables. I know that's kind of hard to see at your angle. A uh, couple of pages of superheated tables. And then there's graphical diagrams also. Again, you're welcome to use. I'm not going to. If you really want to, I'll, I'll try to help you out. Okay? Then there are some ideal gas tables and diagrams that we will talk about a little later in the course. For right now, for Chapter 3, let's just focus on uh, water and R134 tables for, for preparation for Exam 1, which is next week, by the way. At least I'm recording this video on Monday, so for you guys, for me, it's next week. I don't know when you're watching this video. Okay, um, and then after that, so starting at page 931 in the ninth edition, I don't know what it is in your edition, but this is a Appendix 2. This is English units, and it's the exact same information just on the metric units, except they're going to be in English. By the way, if you, um, if you uh, took the easy way out and converted your units in the, the early problems to, to metric units because you didn't want to do English units, um, well, okay, whatever works for you, I guess. You, you, you won't be able to do that after Chapter 2. Because if you do that, you're going to make using the tables impossible. Uh, well, not impossible, but way more effort than it's worth. You really want to use, learn to use the English system um, and not take the lazy way out and convert to metric every time. But anyway, um, it's okay if you've done it so far. I'm just telling you, you, you might want to go back and work those problems in English units and, and really understand, get a better understanding of how that works. Because right now it's going to be Greek to you. Um, so English tables. Um, same information, saturated tape A4, E is saturated water, nice round values of temperature, corresponding pressures. A5 is nice round pressures, corresponding temperatures. So at approximately one atmosphere, that's 14.7 psi. Water boils at about 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so you would expect it. Okay. And so again, same information. And then after your compressed liquid water table, we go on and you've got R1, well, you've got diagrams. And then you've got R134 tables. I'm trying to not lose too many pages at once. And then you've got R134 tables. Same information again. Okay. So that is kind of the quick, very fast-paced tour of the property tables. Why use those? Well, again, what that is. Again, the equations to describe this information, to actually be able to figure out what is a U value based on pressure and temperature. It's, um, well, historically, it's just been easier to publish these as tables and you just figure out, based on your properties you have, where you should be at on the tables. <coughs> so let's talk about doing that. Um, a couple of things here. I, I mentioned there's this quantity, this H quantity, enthalpy. H, enthalpy, is the sum of the internal energy plus the product of pressure and volume. So if you went through and at, multiplied pressure and volume, if you went through and, and picked out um, you know, a combination of pressure and temperature, go to the superheated table, pick out a random pressure and temperature, take the pressure, multiply it to the volume, um, and then add that product to the internal energy and make sure your units match up, you would get the same or approximately the same value you would get for the enthalpy, the H value. Now you you don't have you don't have big H, big U and P big V. What you have is you have specific enthalpy 
is equal to specific internal energy plus the product of pressure and specific volume. Okay, so that's what you will find. And the reason for that, why is that? Well, it's because um, if we publish the tables per unit mass, then it doesn't matter how big my system is, how much mass is in my system, what is the extent of my system. These are extensive properties. They depend on the mass or the extent of the system. These are intensive properties. They do not depend on the mass of the system. So I can use the same property tables for uh, the water that's in my cup. I can use the same property tables for the water that's in my swimming pool, even though it's vastly different masses of water. The same property tables can be used. So that's the reason for the lowercase parameters. It doesn't matter how big my system is. <coughs> okay. So, that's enthalpy, right? Again, H is the sum of U and the product of PV. Okay? Um, that means, let's write something else here. Right? If that means um, the units here, right? so the units here are kilojoules or BTUs, the British thermal unit. The units here are kilojoules per kilogram or BTU per pound mass. Now the other property that's in those tables, so the tables will have U values, P and Vs, Hs, and they will also have an S value, the entropy. That come, becomes important for us in Chapter 7 when we start talking about the second law. Understand finding an S value is just like finding a U or an H value right now. Uh, it works the same way. Um, it, it's just we're just not going to have to worry too much about it. The problem in Chapter 3, they might ask you to find the entropy value. We're not going to do anything useful with that entropy value until later in the course. But U values, that's back here in the first law. We're going to use those to go into the first law equation. So let's talk about how do we find those. So how do we, Steve, how do we, <laughs> that's a lot, right? Got these tables, a bunch of tables. Which table do I use? Using tables. Again, this is lecture five and six. This is page number two of my notes so far. Using tables. I break it down to a four-step process. What I would suggest is have this somewhere handy that you can get to. You're going to want this throughout, literally throughout the rest of the course. Anytime you encounter water, R134 in this course, you're going to use this process. Uh, it's going to seem really weird and Greek to you about the first, I don't know, 10, 15 times you had to go through it. Um, after about the first 10 or 15 times, you'll get kind of start to get the hang of it. After going through this process, and I'm not kidding here, over 100 times, you'll start to become very good at it. Um, now, the question is, is, how quickly do you hit that 100 times? You probably want to hit that 100 times before you try to tackle exam two. It's going to be a challenge on exam one because you're probably not going to get to 100 times there. In, in some of your, and in, in, uh, whenever I say this in class, people kind of chuckle. They think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. We're going to do this throughout the rest of the course. Um, you, so after about 100 times of doing this, you'll get good at it. So the question is on you. How, <laughs> do you, do you want to, when do you want that 100 times to occur? Between now and exam two or between now and the final? And which means you're probably going to really struggle on exam two and exam three. Practice, practice, practice. This process does not change. Um, step one is easy. Identify your substance. What substance am I working with? If it's water in R134, uh, we're going to use those water in R134 tables. If it's an ideal gas or if it's a solid and liquid, we'll have other processes we'll talk about as we move forward. But for exam one, we're going to focus on water in R134. Step two, what do you know? Identify known properties. Right? What do you know about uh, what you have right now? And, and the known properties we're really interested in is P, uh, V, T, the three properties that are easy to measure. Uh, but we might also, for some reason, have a U value, an H value, or an S value. And i got to stop there. We'll pick up on the next one.